Well, greetings, viewers and voyeurs. You have got that funk. And this is a follow-up video to yesterday's video. Uh, the title of that one was The United Front of Bigotry in the EU. I didn't make that video. If you've already seen it, you know I mirrored it. Um, it was made by my friend Jesus Lives 57 I wanted to mirror the video because I thought it was a pretty important piece of work, and it uh, brought up quite a few points which I'm not going to rehash here. But as a foreigner who's legally resident in the EU, at the moment the UK, um, issues to do with immigration policy affect me directly. And so therefore, it's an important issue for me personally as well as um, philosophically. All right. Now, I'm not going to rehash the video here. That wouldn't be, make any sense. But the video did elicit some really interesting comments, which I think merit some deeper discussion. Now, one of the coolest guys that I'm subscribed to left me a comment which I find very interesting. His name is Freethinker3161. Wicked guy, great sense of humor, great channel. You should check out his videos. I'll link his main page in the sidebar. But Freethinker left me a thought, uh, a comment here, which sort of stumped me. I really couldn't quite believe what I was reading. Not that I disagree with it per se, but I think the emphasis is needs a bit of clarification. So let me just go into it a little bit and tell you where my problems with this particular comment are. Um, I'm going to read it out to you guys. I think the Islamic culture and their ideas about liberty and freedom should give pause to people living in Europe. It's not about race. It's about a culture that does not see the ideas of liberty as the indigenous people of Europe do. Wow. Um, I started my comment reply by saying, indigenous people? Question mark. That's a slippery slope, my friend. Well, I didn't really get a chance in the comment section to elaborate what I meant by it's a slippery slope, and I think it's so important I want to do so here and now. First of all, free thinker. Who would decide what makes what qualifies a person as indigenous in Europe? I mean, if you think about it, this continent has people coming and going from every direction for literally millennia. Almost every country in Europe has been at war with every other country in Europe at some point or another. And I know that's an exaggeration, but you get the point. I mean, different countries have invaded different countries in this continent over and over and over again. Bloodlines have been mixed over and over and over again. I mean, hell, here in the UK, you've had multiple invasions from the French. You've had invasions from the Vikings. You've had invasions from the Romans etc. So, and those bloodlines have mixed in and all have integrated and guess what? People are still British. So, that's one thing I would say about that. So, even if, and it's a pretty fucking big if, even if you could define indigenous, then you have to decide what to do with all the other people who aren't indigenous and, you know, the kind of racist that we're talking about in yesterday's video, Nick Griffin and his sort of thing from the BNP, they want to kick them all back to their original countries. Now, Nick Griffin is on record as saying there's no such thing as a black Welshman. Now, Freethinker, you and me might think that, uh, you know, if you're born in a particular country, you are indigenous to that country. And it is true that legally, that is your nationality. But Nick Griffin and his brand of racist... They don't think there's any such thing as a black Welshman. If you're black and born in Wales, it doesn't matter that you were born in there. You can't be Welsh because you're black. It doesn't matter if you were born there and your parents were born there. You're still black and can't be Welsh. It doesn't matter if you were born there, your parents were born there, and your grandparents were born there. Guess what? You still can't be Welsh because you're black. So these people aren't talking about where you were born. They're talking about where your ancestors come from. Now, defining the indigenous population in any country would require you to draw a line in history somewhere and say everyone who's descended from people who've been here ever since such and such a time is indigenous. Now, I, I wouldn't want to have that kind of responsibility, and I doubt you would either. So that's one thing. Another thing, implicit with your comment, is that indigenous people have more rights than non-indigenous people. And quite frankly, I could not disagree more. I'm an alien to this country, but I expect and demand all the rights that the local people have. Why shouldn't I? Why should I be less of a person than everyone else around me? That doesn't make any sense. So you can't really say that indigenous people should have more rights than non-indigenous people, even if you could define what indigenous was. Another thing I would say, you know, the, the BNP mentality that uh, 
wants to put all black people back in Africa and repatriate all Islamic people to whatever their country of origin was or the country of origin of their ancestors, depending on how long they've been here. Um, you know, you would think if you got rid of all the non-indigenous European people that the population of Europe would decrease, wouldn't you? Quite substantially, I would have thought. However, if we're going to apply that logic to Europe, we should surely apply it to the rest of the world. In which case, the population of Europe would more than double. Why would I say that? Well, think about it. All the Caucasian people in Canada, the United States, all the people who were descended from Europeans in Central and South America would all have to fuck off back to Europe, wouldn't they? We'd also have to empty Australia out while we're at it and give it back to the Aborigines. Now, um, so that's like more than half a billion people <laughs> which would have to come back to Europe. Clearly that can't work. Um, and I don't think there's any appetite in North America to give North America back to the Native Americans. Shocking, I know. But if we're going to give indigenous people special rights, well, that's what they should have, shouldn't they? So you really have to think this kind of a comment through. I mean, think about it. I'm going to read the end of your comment again because it's really, really relevant here. It's about a culture that does not see the ideas of liberty as the indigenous people do. Now, Freethinker, you and I are both American, and we both enjoy a certain level of security and a certain level of liberty, which is denied people who weren't lucky enough to be born in our country. Not everyone in the world is denied those rights, but a lot of people don't have the same kind of liberty that we do. We take that as red, yeah? But from the point of view of the Native Americans, our liberty is restricted. I mean, those people, Freethinker, they, before Europeans came to North America, the people who were native there didn't have any laws. So therefore, they couldn't break any laws. They didn't have any government. So they couldn't be oppressed by any central power structure. They were as free as the birds, okay? By comparison, we are not free. So we took our alien freedom and imposed it on them and expected them to deal with it. They didn't want it so badly that we made them live in little tiny corners of the least wanted parts of the states that they used to inhabit the whole area of. So indigenous people can't be given special rights and if you think they can then you need to start packing and decide to move back to Italy or wherever your ancestors come from. Uh, my ancestors come from Denmark and the UK so I guess I would stay here or maybe move in, in Wagner. You never know. Anyway, so I just want to give you some of that to chew on, think it over, and do get back to me because I think it merits a lot of discussion.